Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Cafe AI podcast. Uh, today, I'm super excited to have Tommy Holmgren, VP of Solutions at Robocorp Alarm. And to get things started, Tommy, why don't you give a brief introduction to yourself and uh, what you do at Robocorp? Thanks for inviting me, Emil. Uh, amazing to be here. Um, as, as you said, I'm VP of Solutions at Robocorp. Uh, Robocorp is a enterprise automation platform. So think of RPA or robotic process automation or intelligent automations. You know, there's, there's many names for a, for a, a great thing. Um, I joined last summer, uh, having over 20 years of experience in, in business to business software and SaaS. And uh, I, my team is responsible for building the, like the, the, the key building blocks of how our developers build those robots, software robots. Um, my team manages the community and and uh, tech vendor ecosystem. No, oh, that's 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 super cool to hear. Um, and why don't we just get right into mm -hmm. Tommy? Because I think that there's a topic that both both you and I are very <laughs> excited about. I mean, yeah. of course, all things Gen AI mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. you know, naturally being an, an automation company, I know it's something you guys you guys think about a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Would love to hear just your initial thoughts, how you're you're approaching sort of Gen AI at at, at Robocorp. And where you think it fits into the platform and, and offering? I think that that question has so many different angles. You can you can kind of start start tackling. Um, you can look at the really long term, or you can look at the really short term. And I think that, that the impact of generative AI and large language models, obviously, I think it will be huge uh, over over a long period, um, like very long term. Um, I do think that there will be there will be completely new ways of developing automations. Uh, you know, the, the code or low code approaches currently taken by majority of the vendors will probably evolve to something where you can really easily describe that I want to get those tennis balls from uh, from Amazon, get them shipped over to me. Um, so something like that will happen. So it will take away the need of building those bots. But then at the same time, like working with the enterprise customers dominantly, we do see also the need of being very precise and being kind of a descriptive on building those automations. So you don't want to add that uh, kind of a kind of a black box in between that might generate something else in a in a different run. So we do see that there will be most likely significant changes over a long period of time. But how they will play out, of course, I don't, I don't think anybody knows yet. But no, that yeah. that makes a ton of sense. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen you know you've already made a few smaller launches. Mm -hmm. I guess just to kind of get the yeah. the ball moving with, with some open AI integrations and so on. How are you thinking yeah. about um, how are you thinking about sort of the very short term um, additions to the to the platform? Yeah. So that's uh, that's where things get really interesting in in my opinion. Um, short term, I think there's things that you can capture already today. Like you don't need to wait. That's my message when we're talking with with large customers. Um, if you're in the enterprise uh, context, you of course uh, worried about whether the, the you know the models are in the cloud, where, where does the data go? But I don't think that should prevent you from starting to explore. Maybe you don't go to production yet, but you start to explore. Those models will be available on prem for sure in a, in a decent time frame. So we're pushing people to go out and explore, and, and we kind of do that ourselves as well. So I see there's a there's a multitude of, of, of uh, short-term impacts on, on uh, especially in, in how the bots are being built. So our platform is, uh, is, is slightly different to, like, let's say, the, the, the established RPA uh, platform. So you build bots on our platform with code. So it's Python or Robot Framework code. And, and that's, that puts us in a really nice position in terms of uh, code generation, of course. Python is really well general, like you can generate Python really well with, with a large language models compared to some platform that is vendor specific and, and low code. So the first impact you can see is uh, just utilizing tools like GitHub Copilot or any, any coding copilot that can generate the code. And we have really good examples of developers who, who might not be super experienced in, in, in code being able to push their kind of boundaries further and, and actually do more with the with the platform using the, the large language models. And and that it covers like a lot of other things, like just being able to take somebody else's uh, code and bo or, or bot and, and just explain what it does. Uh, being able to convert from legacy platforms to us uh, using LLMs or just all the document things. And, and these are all the things that we, we are exploring already. And, and uh, we have like internal demos. We have a lot of YouTube videos on on some of the examples, and uh, and, and and I think a lot of these things will be in the product as well. So, 
That's really, really cool to hear. Um, one topic you, you briefly mentioned, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on is, 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 of course, you know, totally agree with you. It's just a matter of time before a lot of these models become deployable mm -hmm. on-prem. Um, I think especially given Microsoft's close relationship yeah. with OpenAI, right? But what are some of the sort of early objections you're hearing from these, I guess, very early adopter enterprises that are beginning to dabble a bit into large language models? Um, I'd say that that kind of a, the cloud nativeness of, um, of, of the platforms, that's pretty much the, the main objection. Um, we're hearing, of course, there's, there's concerns on where, where will the costs go and, and like, it's, if, you, if you're in the business where you, need, you, you really need to be audited on, on your decisions and, and so forth, so like those, but I don't think they're so much different compared to what they were for any machine learning models in the past. So it's just kind of a, there's been a massive boost on what, what's, yeah. what's possible and, and, uh, and what you can build today. Yeah, no, to to totally agree. And, and I think it's just a matter of time before mm -hmm. everyone starts catching up, right, to, to kind of what is what yeah. is just possible these days. Yeah. And it's it's not only the like, like the building of those bots and like supporting the developer. Yeah. That's 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 kind of an easy, almost like a low hanging fruit at the moment. But yeah. but there are a lot of discussions currently we are having with, with the customers around what are then the actual capabilities in terms of automation. So not just building the bot, but what can the bot do in a different way or in, in, in a better or faster way than, than before. And, and we are seeing a lot of discussions around better utilization of, of uh, or better understanding the documents or like extracting data from really complex documents that was quite difficult with the, with the, uh, with the current document AI or IDP uh, platforms. Um, we are seeing customer service or sales related use cases where you can, for example, kind of bring the chatbot for real into the into the automations. And, and I think this is like, this is something that it, it's super exciting to see that the chatbots that were there before, I, I've had always a bit negative uh, kind of a, <laughs> uh, opinion on, on chatbots, but we've seen already really good examples where the chatbot can, can have part of the dialogue, uh, for example, with a customer, which then is handed over to a, a human operator with which much better background information and, and kind of a enriched information. So, so that's a, that's an exciting uh, development yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, there's almost an, an infinite amount of integrations. I, I, yes. I can't think, but or help but think how well positioned you, you, you guys are to start leveraging a lot of these. I mean, even just yeah. right as you mentioned the document extraction side, there's so much cool stuff coming out. Yeah, I think un unstructured is, is one of the cooler yeah. startups that are building a bunch of like you know yeah. guardrails for how do you do good extraction mm -hmm. with with LLMs and so it's, yeah. it's almost an infinite amount of things here. So yeah. it's very. very I, cool. I, I... I, lo I love all those um, the the chat with your document uh, use cases yeah. and examples that are built built and I, it's it's amazing to see like almost I'd say on a weekly basis there's something new somebody has built somewhere that uh, that uh, that kind of excites us and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at what what would be the next steps and where, where to go. Yeah, no, for sure, Tommy. I am. Um, I want to get to one other topic as well. Since you mentioned you, you cover a lot of ground in Robocorp, but one of the things that's that's also top of mind for you is, is managing this uh, um, super active uh, developer community you have that that uh, um, partly lives in Slack um, mm -hmm. with with many thousands of members. Would love to hear maybe just your take on sort of how do you see the the, the role of community for. Um, um, for, for, for Robocorp, um, how are you guys thinking about investing into community, nurturing it, and, and, and where is that headed in the next few years? We're kind of, I'd say kind of a, in a positive way, kind of a nerdy company in a way that like <laughs> all the way to, to executive team, uh, a lot of us have a developer background. So we, we really love uh, the developer community. We, we, we built the platform for developers. It's, it's all about developing uh, robots with a tooling that is worth today's uh, today's developers and and uh, you know we're liberating developers from the vendor locked in uh, walled gardens of uh, low code uh, clicking clicking UIs. Um, so we we really invest in our community. It's uh, I think it's closing in on fourteen thousand developers in Slack oh. at the moment. Um, it's been growing really really fast recently, but as we we believe that the software developers are the people who build these bots also in the future. Of course, you might use you know large language models to, to make it faster, make it easier. But this, we, we really want to invest in in tools. First of all, tools 
that are worthy for all the developers and they, they love using them. And then of course we want to also offer a, a platform for community to to kind of use our use our tools in the best possible way, help each others, and then we can engage with engage with the community, get feedback, and and make make our tools better that way. So it's a big big investment from us and and, and very kind of a key focus areas in in our operations. No, it make, makes a ton of sense. I think mm -hmm. it's it's a common trait um, mm -hmm. uh, you see across um, some of the more mature developer focusing companies, right? That, that they have chosen to to take on, and I think you said it right, this this investment, mm -hmm. right? Um, because mm -hmm. it does take time, it does take resources. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's, it's a requirement for 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 a lot of folks to be in there to, to actually nurture it to to grow to the mm -hmm. stage that's at now. Um, so really really cool to see. Um, yeah, and I I think it comes like a. Also, like a lot of the um, the developers who onboard to our platform come, they, they might be coming from the like the, the first generation RPA platforms they've been building uh, with local tools. So it, yeah. it is also kind of our responsibility to 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 help them onboard <laughs> as quickly as possible and as easy as possible. We make the experience uh, smooth. So so that that is our responsibility. And 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 what it's really really amazing to hear from the community uh, when when uh, when the developers say that uh, that oh my god I, like I, I was trained by uh, like to be a software developer I've been working on some other platforms for a while but now I'm actually like a real real devel developer again I'm working on python and and like you know there's, there's no limits I can build whatever I can go to you know build AI stuff or I can do something else so it's it's really I think it's really rewarding to work with the community oh super cool to hear Tommy yeah. um uh, maybe to bring this to a close any yeah. um Anything folks should, uh, should go to to check out from uh, from a Robocorp side here um, to finish off on any exciting new uh, <laughs> new things in the roadmap shortly. Well, there's a lot of uh, exciting things in um, in the roadmap in in, ter in terms of our control room and, and our, like the bot capabilities. We just released a brand new uh, UX uh, for the control room, and and that's like uh, with with a theme that enterprise apps don't need to suck. <laughs> and the, 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 it looks really cool. I I I love it myself. It's it's really amazing looking. So go check out the, the control room. But also uh, our collaboration with Kappa AI on on helping the community developers in the Slack. I think it's been picking up really really nicely recently. There's uh, it, it really helps us, but it also helps the developers. They can get answers um, from from the chatbot or like 24 seven when our staff might be sleeping. Um, and it's uh, it, it's really amazing to see uh, how high quality answers actually. I, like, I think it's the, the whole um, approach has exceeded my expectations that, that we can actually serve the developers in a really nice way. And it's a great addition. And I, I, one of my favorite activities in the afternoons is to go to follow what other questions in, in, uh, in the Kappa channel and see if the answers are correct. Of course, not, they're not always correct or they're of not course. always perfect. And then go like, where did we find this thing from the documentation? <laughs> It's, no, it's I appreciate the appreciate the kind words and, and closing thoughts here. It's, it's a joy to work together with the, the, the team to uh, keep iterating at Kappa. Um, and perfect. I'll put links to all those notes in the uh, description yeah. below. Other than that, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. And, and thank you so much for coming on here, Tom. Thank you. Have a good day.